So if you could just give some tips on how people can be consistent top performers, because again, like you, you've, I mean, you've done a lot in just eight years. You've done a crap ton, and I mean, again, senior level enterprise tech sales top performer. How have you been able to do that? You know, I know you mentioned a little bit of networking. You mentioned, of course, like work. But like, what are some tips or advice you can give to somebody that doesn't just want to get in the industry, but they want to be a top level performer? I studied like sales. You know okay. what I mean? Sales is an art, in my opinion. Like sales is really understanding emotional intelligence. It's mm -hmm. understanding like personas of individuals, like how someone comes on the phone, like simple things. Like I don't really there's certain phrases I may not use. And this came with learning and tuning and um, I also am very, very accountable as an individual. Um, so, for example, I told my manager when I first got to Microsoft, I said, if I'm not number one, you need to call my phone mm. and let me know right now. And what did she do last week? She called my phone and said, what's going on? You're yeah. not number one right now. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I know you took your birthday break. You about to go to Seattle on Monday. You got two weeks to hit your number this month. So, you know, I need you to step up right now. And I went up this week. Like, that's that's Yo. how I am. Like, I'm like, yeah. Like, I tell my management, like, this is my goal is mm -hmm. to be number one. Like, I'm yeah. coming into any organization with that energy. So, and I manifest. Like, I'm really big on manifesting. And that's, like, a whole nother topic outside of this. But I speak that into existence. Before I got to Microsoft, you can go on my YouTube, my vlogs. I was telling them I'm going to be a number one performer there. Yeah. Like, I have that mindset that that's just gonna happen for me and it does repeatedly and I think it's because I believe that I should be number one. Yeah. I don't believe anybody else should be number one because if I'm not number one, that means like I'm lacking in some area that yeah. I can fine tune. Um, but I would say the main things, like I said, is studying sales, read some books on sales, read, mm -hmm. listen to people who are top sellers. What are their methodologies on how they communicate with customers, how they respond to people, how do you, send emails and marketing how do you keep perfecting that Man. like you know do you do a b testing with your marketing are you you know trying to hit a certain number like if you get a number you should be trying to beat that number because you'll fall on that number you, you know? sound like the kobe of of texas <laughs> like, <right now>. so, <laughs> i like mamba mentality yeah. and i think i was an athlete i ran track so okay. i think a lot of this stems just from my life um I've been highly competitive like in my lifetime. So yeah. um yeah, just not you know, something somebody told me at IBM um before I left was one, there's two quotes that I really live by. If you don't believe in yourself, why should anybody else? One. That's Ooh. one of the biggest quotes that I live by. If I don't believe I could be number one, why would anybody else think I could be number one? Yeah. Like that's the energy I should have when that's I wake real. up. Um and two Somebody told me your professionalism is a reflection of you. So if you don't care about it, that says a lot about how you feel about yourself. Wow. Yeah. And I'll never forget that because I asked him, I was like, how come you're just so professional? Like, why do you care like so much? And he was like, why don't you care? Ooh. why don't you care about what you do every day and what you wake up to put in the effort to do? Like, why half ass it? Like, why yeah. give 75 percent of it? You know? Yeah. And the more that I've had that mentality, the easier it becomes to be number one because most people don't come in with that mentality. Yeah. They just don't. Like, they're just like, I just got a job. I'm just going to perform. Whereas I'm like, no, I want to be the number one performer. Yes. You know? And it reflects. And management sees it. And VP sees it. And that's how you accelerate as an individual as well. Like, I just got chosen out of 10 people who've been hired in the past six months to go to headquarters in Seattle to now go for a week to meet with executives. So then that opens the door now mm -hmm. to way more opportunity. And then having the African-American representation, I'm already a black woman, so there's nobody else typically like on yeah. the team that's like me. It just, you have to like look at all these things and take them into consideration and say, I have these tools, how do I utilize them to my advantage? Yeah. I'm a black woman, I'm the, biggest minority in this space and i'm mm -hmm. outperforming white men <laughs> like yeah there's gonna be seen it's gonna be oh, talked definitely. about <laughs> it's just definitely. nothing else so the more that registered in my mind and then the reaction when it first happened let me know everything i needed to know yeah. <laughs> it was like what was the reaction like i mean you got white men like they're they're like this girl <laughs> like this girl did this you know and yeah. then being a girl 
sales is very male dominated. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I'll get on the phone with a customer and like. It's just a lot easier to talk to males as a female, personally. It, I, I already think a have lot of women advantage. don't realize like, how. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there are a lot of women who are, they're, they're like, oh, I don't want to. They're like, I don't, I'm not sure I don't want to do tech sales. I'm like, well, why don't you, is it because you don't want to do it? Or because they're like, like, I'm not sure if like I'll be good at it or I don't. I'm like, you don't understand that, that women, generally speaking, women have like a skill did, did men, like men, we, we, we sometimes have to like ex exert like a certain level an of ego. aggression. It's an ego, an ego thing. To, like, like with women, y'all have these. When two men get on a call, yes. it's like, I'm the smarter one. Like, it's yes. like this thing, whereas I'm just like, how can I help you or better understand your needs today? Yeah, it's like, like how catering. can I, like, you know, it's a very different energy. And my manager yeah. will always laugh because like, yeah. he would get chewed out on a call and I can call the same customer with a different tone a whole different yeah. energy and get what I want out of a customer. Yeah. Like I used so, to love demoing with uh with the sales rep that was a woman. woman. Yeah. And it was like cause the way they could talk to the the customers was so and, and it and it's using the femininity, like still yeah. being a sales, but like using like that femininity, like right. that so, like using that skill energy. set. It's a I've seen energy. the men get weak and be like They'll just be like, yeah, so we're going to set up the next right. call and Literally. we're going to do this and we're going to do that. <laughs> and they would just assume everything and, the, and they'll be like, yeah, sure. And they'll be like, so do you want to go with like the cheaper package or are you going to go for like the full thing? Yeah. And they'll be like, we're going to go for the full thing. No, <laughs> it's like, literally. It's like, yo, we're going to go for the full thing. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just that. And then I think also like being like a young person in tech, when I start to articulate myself a certain way and, and exert my value around technology, mm -hmm. That alone, I always tell people to be really great, you need to be an expert. Like, I don't like getting on yeah. my calls, like, I don't know the answer to that. Like, Ooh. even if I'm not the sales engineer, I still listen to what you're saying because I don't wanna always have to call you or depend on you to like answer my customer questions. The best thing is active listening. I tell people this all the time, the mm. key to selling is just shut up, just shut up, let them talk. Mm. This was one of the biggest, gems that was dropped on me very early in my sales career was the less you talk the more information you're getting from the customer mm -hmm. the more you're talking the sales call is not going well yeah you are you're talking too much i'm not saying don't ask um you know you want to ask questions that uncover challenges with your with your customers but once i ask that question i'm not cutting you off i'm not jumping in yes i'm letting you give me what i need I'm taking a second to process. I'm taking notes actively, which is really important. I always tell people, be very proactive with your note taking because that's how you go back and strategize. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I said, I like being the quarterback. So now I know what play to run the mm -hmm. next time I talk to you because yes. I listen to you. And there's just things that people miss that are very, very important, I feel like, in sales. Um, and, and it could be like you were in sales for 10 years, but you just haven't mastered certain skills that mm -hmm. uncover help you negotiate, help you really like ask those tough questions. Sometimes it's really tough to ask certain questions yeah. on a customer call, you know? So yeah. it could be like uncomfortable questions sometimes. Right. To ask and them. it's like, how do I go about that? How do you handle objections? Do you get upset? Can your customer, you know, see that you're like, you may be a little upset that they're not, you're resisting, you know, like it's, it's, it's just so, so much more of personal being personable to me than selling. And I consider myself like an advisor to my clients more than a, a seller. Like, I'm not selling you anything. You have a problem and we could either be the fit or not. Like, I'm not really selling you anything. Like, if I don't feel like it's a fit, I'm not going to push that on the yeah. customer because that they can pick up that energy. Like, yeah, definitely. you know, yeah. so I would say that's really what I personally feel like has really helped me elevate my career is treating this as I'm talking to another person when I get on the phone. Like, that's just it. Like, I'm yeah. not talking to a CEO or a CISO, I'm talking to somebody who's really busy, mm -hmm. has a problem, has a lot of KPIs they need to hit internally, mm -hmm. yeah. has their management on their ass. So how can I make your life easier today, mm -hmm. right? So like yeah. when I approach the problem from that perspective, it's like, oh, I actually enjoyed talking to Kayla like today. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Like, so yeah. <laughs>